Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India's Prime Minister Modi calls for diplomacy to end Russia-Ukraine conflict at G20 summit. Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz lawmaker slam Imran Khan over U-turn on US conspiracy. And Sri Lanka must implement budget proposals to avoid return to crisis, says Central Bank Governor. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday urged a return to diplomacy to end the Russia-Ukraine war as he addressed the G20 summit in Indonesia, reiterating the call for peace in the ongoing conflict. The Prime Minister also highlighted India's stance on food and energy security and later met U.S. President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, among others, to boost bilateral ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday attended the 17th G20 Leaders' Summit in Indonesia's Bali and urged a return to diplomacy to end the Russia-Ukraine war as he reiterated the South Asian nation's call for peace in the ongoing conflict. India has not condemned Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, but Modi told Russian President Vladimir Putin in September that today's era is not an era of war. The summit marks the first time G20 leaders are meeting since Russia's February invasion of Ukraine and amid efforts of the U.S. and Western allies to impose a price cap on Russian oil exports. PM Modi said there should be no restrictions on energy supplies and stability in the energy market should be ensured. India's energy security is also important for global growth, he said, according to a statement by the Indian Foreign Ministry. PM Modi also discussed global and regional developments in a separate meeting with US President Joe Biden and met British PM Rishi Sunak and French President Emmanuel Macron as well, among other leaders. Later in the day, in an address to the Indian diaspora in Bali, he highlighted, India is the world's fastest growing large economy as it does not think small and works at unprecedented scale and speed. He added, India has stood firmly with Indonesia during its challenging times, while acknowledging the shared heritage and culture between the two countries. 90 nautical mil ka fasla bhale ho, lekin hakikat to ye hai, hum 90 nautical mil dur nahi hai, hum 90 nautical mil paas hai. The Bali summit is particularly special because India will be handed over the presidency of the G20 for a one-year period starting December 1, during its closing ceremony on Wednesday. And in news from Pakistan, after former Prime Minister Imran Khan's U-turn on his foreign conspiracy allegation in his ouster, incumbent Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and leaders of the ruling coalition have lambasted the PTI chairman. While Khan has said he no longer blames the U.S. for his removal from office, ministers in the Sharif-led government have demanded action against him for misleading the country. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Monday criticised opposition PDI party chairman and former PM Imran Khan over his U-turn on the American conspiracy theory. Khan, in an interview with Financial Times, had said he no longer blames US for toppling his government in a parliamentary vote in April. Sharif, reacting sharply to this U-turn, called Khan's previous allegation an attempt to harm Pakistan's foreign relations for his political gain. The remark also received criticism from ruling coalition ministers in the National Assembly who demanded Khans shouldn't be let off the hook as he misled the country with fake documents. Defence Minister Khwaja Asif slamming Imran Khan accused him of playing with the dignity of the country. और उस साइफर को जो है उसकी बुनियाद बनाया आज वो कहता है इट्स बिहाइंड मी 
and it's all over. No, it's not all over. अब वक्त आया कि तुम्हारे इस झूठ की वजह से तुम्हारे गिरबान के ऊपर हाथ पड़ना चाहिए इस कौम का भी और जो इज्जत और वकार जिसके साथ तुम खेले इस हाउस के उसका भी तुम उसकी भी कीमत अदा करो इमरान खान है He had alleged leaders of Sharif-led government to have sided with the U.S. for his removal, terming the incumbent coalition as imported government. Since his ouster, he has demanded snap polls, which the government has rejected, saying the elections will be held as scheduled later next year. Sri Lanka's central bank chief has said that in order to stabilize the economy, the island nation needs to implement budget proposals and reform measures to start earning crucial foreign exchange. His remarks came a day after President Ranil Wickremesinghe unveiled the annual budget and said that the Sri Lankan economy can turn around by the end of 2023. Sri Lanka's central bank governor Nandlal Veera Singh he said on Tuesday that the island nation needs to implement budget proposals and reform measures to start earning crucial foreign exchange to help stabilize its economy and ensure it does not return to crisis. President Ranil Wickremesinghe unveiling the annual budget on Monday said that the Sri Lankan economy can turn around by the end of 2023 if budget policies are followed. Wickremesinghe laid down several medium term targets for the government increasing international trade as a percentage of GDP by more than 100%, annual growth of 3 billion US dollar from new exports over the next 10 years as well as attracting 3 billion US dollars in foreign direct investment. over the same period he also said the government plan to reduce debt to less than 100% of the gdp the central bank governor in a post budget discussion said the situation in the island nation was stable but at a very low point he added the next crucial step is to get financing assurances from creditors as the disbursement of the 2.9 billion dollar imf program hinges on this condition Soaring inflation, a weakening currency and low foreign exchange reserves have left the island of 22 million people struggling to pay for imports of essentials such as food, fuel and medicine. Well, the European Union has criticized the additional restrictions by the Taliban on women's freedom of movement including the recent barring of women from entering public parks and gyms. It has called on the Taliban to honor obligations under international law, in particular human rights, refugee and humanitarian law. The European Union on Monday condemned the additional restrictions by the Taliban on women's freedom of movement. including the newly announced rules barring women from entering public parks and gyms in a statement the 27 member bloc said that these restrictions are in contradiction to the taliban's own initial promises it noted that afghan women and girls remain deprived of secondary education face restrictions in their travel and movement and are excluded from the most aspects of public and economic life the eu called on the taliban to honor obligations under international law in particular human rights refugee and humanitarian law and to ensure respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms of all afghan population since the taliban seized control of afghanistan in august 2021 its systematic attacks on the rights of women and girls and the use of violence including torture and enforced disappearances have created a culture of fear in afghan society the islamist taliban has said women should not leave home without a male relative and must cover their faces though some women in urban centers ignore the rule while some women have been permitted to work in government offices western governments have said the group needs to reverse its course on women's rights for any part towards formal recognition of the taliban government And news from Nepal. Nepal's opposition CPN UML chairman K P Sharma Oli, while addressing a rally on Monday, exuded confidence that the ruling alliance will be wiped out after the November 20th election. The five-party ruling alliance led by Nepali Congress has been in government since July last year. The contest is mainly between the Nepali Congress Party and the UML Party. 
leader of Nepal's main opposition, CPN UML, and former Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Monday said that the ruling alliance will be wiped out after the upcoming elections as he addressed a poll rally in Chitwan. Terming the alliance expired drugs, Oli said that the ruling alliance will suffer the same fate as the erstwhile monarchy. The Nepali Congress and the Moist Centre are expired medicines. They will fail to deliver, he was quoted as saying by local media. In a separate rally, member of ruling coalition CPN Moist Centre chairperson Pushp Kamal Dehel claimed that the alliance will continue to safeguard peace and the constitution as it did during the signing of the Comprehensive Peace Accord, which ended a 10-year Moist insurgency. The five-party ruling alliance led by Nepali Congress has been in government since July last year. Nepal will undergo election for House of Representatives and Provisional Assemblies on November 20. Rising inflation and economic policies are expected to be the key issues for this election. Apart from this, Nepal will also look to have stable government as none of the parties have ever completed the full term of five years. In a unique incident, residents in India's northern Gurugram city organized a wedding of two dogs with all Hindu rituals this past weekend. A huge crowd of people had gathered to witness the ceremonies as relatives and guests danced to drum beats to celebrate the occasion. Have a look. In a bizarre incident, residents of India's northern Gurugram city organized a unique wedding of two dogs with all Hindu rituals on this past weekend. The happiness of a childless couple, Mitrapal Singh and his wife knew no bounds as their pets turned daughter. Sweetie was married to Sheru, a dog in the neighborhood who had been living with his guardians for the past eight years. Sweetie had been with the couple for around three years after she accompanied Singh to a temple where he goes to offer prayers and feed animals. A huge crowd of people gathered to witness the ceremonies as relatives and guests danced to drum beats to celebrate the occasion. Around 25 invitation cards were printed for the wedding and some were sent online to the guests. Food was served to almost a hundred guests who were invited and gifts were also exchanged between the guardians of the dogs. The wedding had has started as a joke but it turned out to be a serious affair after the guardians of the dogs decided to go ahead with the ceremonies. And as the world population is projected to touch the 8 billion mark this week, India, the second most populous country in the world, is faced with the challenge of creating infrastructure for its rural hinterland and transforming its youth bulge into a demographic dividend of a skilled workforce. A report. Crammed commuter trains and buses, stuffy public places and ever-mushrooming vertical constructions define Indian megacities, which are bursting at the seams as they struggle to accommodate a surging population of new residents, often migrants from rural areas, in search of better opportunities. As the world population was projected to touch the 8 billion mark on Tuesday, India, the second most populous country in the world, is faced with the challenge of creating infrastructure for its rural hinterland and transforming its youth bulge into a demographic dividend of a skilled workforce. Millions of fresh migrants converge onto the Indian capital New Delhi and the financial hub Mumbai every year, turning them into a microcosm of the country's worsening overpopulation issue. So, this is our small house. And in our house, we have 5-6 people in our house. And here, there is a lot of light, a lot of water, a lot of water, a lot of water, a lot of water. हर बार तो यहाँ पे गटर भर जाता है कोई साफ करने वाला नहीं है कचरा लेने वाले नहीं है तो हर चीज के लिए यहाँ पे हम लोगों को बहुत ही दिक्कत है। Unemployment is also rampant in the country with thousands of candidates applying for a single post in most sectors. India's unemployment peaked at 23.5% in 2020 in the first full year of COVID-19, then fell back as restrictions eased, but it has remained 7% since, higher than the global average according to data from the Mumbai-based Centre for Monitoring Indian Economy. Because 
एक सीट के लिए आपके पास सौ कैंडिडेट है तो ये भी एक रीज़न है जिसकी वजह से मुझे ऐसा लगता है पॉपुलेशन कंट्रोल होना चाहिए इंडिया इज सेट टू सर्व पास चाइना एज द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट पॉपुलर कंट्री इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री विद ईच काउंटिंग मोर देन वन पॉइंट फोर बिलियन रेजिडेंट दिस ईयर अकॉर्डिंग टू आई यू एन रिपोर्ट रिलीज इन जुलाई द वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन कुड ग्रो टू एट पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन इन ट्वेंटी थर्टी एंड टेन पॉइंट फोर बिलियन इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी वन हंड्रेड एज द पेस ऑफ मोर्टैलिटी स्लोज एडेड द रिपोर्ट Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.